The Mile Lakes Dingo Project aims to examine dingo management practices and come up with new approaches that allow us to work towards coexistence with dingoes in the, in the landscape. Dingoes are a, a controversial animal in Australia. They've got a, a long history of, of conflict with humans. And so trying to find a way in which they can coexist in the landscape and humans can coexist along with them is, is important because they have an important uh, ecological role in, in the community. So the main aim of the project really at the moment is to try and develop a non-lethal management tool for dingoes. So at the moment dingoes are um, often managed lethally um, and there are very few non-lethal options for, for managing them. Living alongside dingoes is quite difficult for, for some industries and, and individuals um, and so there are uh, times when the, when we'd want to deter them from particular areas, so like um, farming areas and things like that. So the idea is to develop a tool that's based on their um, own communication system, their own language, and to um, deter them from going into those areas without having to remove them completely from the environment. And that's important because they have really positive impacts on the environment as well. So the idea is to retain them in the environment but reduce their impacts, uh, their negative impacts. So the work we're doing in the Mile Lakes area involves uh, multiple approaches. First of all we've got uh, camera traps, motion activated cameras spread out across the, the National Park and the aim of those is to capture images of, of dingoes so we can see where they're moving, we can identify individuals from that and we can also identify some of the behaviours that they're doing as they're moving around. Alright so what we have here is a remotely operated acoustic repellent setup, so a raw um, device for sure. Um, it consists of this um, pelican case but inside of which is a big lithium battery, um, an amp, and, the, and a solar controller. So we get solar power from the panel there. Um, and it's hooked up, the amp is hooked up to a couple of big uh, marine spe speakers over there in the tree. And that plays back um, the calls that we've programmed into it, which are in this case dingo howls. And they play um, for the, over a period of a month um, in, in random windows during, during the night. And we're looking to see whether this affects the likelihood of us detecting dingoes in, um, in the arrays that are around, so in the local area basically. So do these calls deter, do they act as territorial signals and can they deter dingoes from uh, coming close into this area? A small number of dingoes in the park have uh, radio collars on them that allow us to locate them and they give us accurate uh, positions throughout the day of where those those animals are and that allows us to determine things like the home range of where they're moving, what times of day are they active and potentially who they're interacting with. We also have a really important citizen science component to the project and through that we're asking the local community and, and visitors to the area to report sightings of dingoes when they when they see them in in the national park in campgrounds in the town and that's really crucial because that gives us a lot more information than what we can gather ourselves up here and then the second part of our, our citizen science program is asking people to then go online and using a platform called zooniverse identify um, the different species that are in the images that we collect. So those camera traps that we've got in the National Park are collecting hundreds or thousands of images a day. And it's a lot for us to sort through. So we use a machine learning mechanism to do a first pass through those images and, and classify it down to the images that have something of interest in them. And then we ask community members to go through and actually tell us whether it's a swamp wallaby or a redneck wallaby or a dingo that's in those pictures. 
We're also really interested in what the dingoes might be eating while they're in the, um, in the national park. And so as part of that, we're collecting their poo. And from their poo, we're able to, to look at what's in it, both through um, hard part analysis, so what bones or fur is still contained in the poo, but also using techniques uh, like genetic techniques to be able to see uh, what, what's in there. And that gives us a good idea of what the, the dingoes are eating and so what sort of interactions they might be having with other animals and also with, with humans. So the project is funded by the Herman Slade Foundation. We also receive funding from Taronga um, and National Parks and Wildlife Service and Mid Coast Council. Um, but we're also working with the local communities and tourists to report sightings of dingo so we can keep track of those peripheral packs that we don't have um, a good handle on at the moment. Um, and yeah, we ask people to um, participate by sending in sightings to our um, online reporting reporting form. We're also working closely. We've set up a um, stakeholder working group, so we're working with all those all those parties um, and also the local tide rangers and local Aboriginal land councils, and just to make sure that everyone's views on dingoes and um, are heard and that everyone's aware of what we're, we're trying to achieve in this amazing landscape. Thank you.